Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Marius. I'm with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel, we do all things resuscitation. So please consider subscribing. On today's video, we'll be looking at the American Heart Association's cardiac arrest algorithm, specifically focusing on the shockable component of the algorithm. So we'll be reviewing ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia. If we respond quickly and effectively in VF or pulseless VTAC, we can significantly improve the patient's chance of survival. As always, we start off with our initial impression. If it appears the victim is unresponsive, go to your BLS assessment, check response, tap and shout, hey, 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 are you okay? Check breathing, check pulse. Five seconds, but no more than 10 seconds. If you cannot find the pulse or the patient is not breathing, immediately activate the code blue and call your local EMS number. Start pushing hard and fast on the center of the chest at a rate of 100 to 120 pushes per minute. Remember to allow full chest recoil. Don't interrupt CPR for longer than 10 seconds and do not hyperventilate. You want to give just enough air to see visible chest rise. If your AED or your crash cart arrives, immediately start using it. If your rhythm initially is one of the shockable rhythms, immediately deliver your first shock. Do not delay. For every minute we delay defibrillation, chances of success for your patient diminishes by 7 to 10% per minute, which is significant. Again, you'll follow the recommendation on the dual settings from the manufacturer. For some of the devices, I've listed them here. If it's a monophasic device, you'll use 360 joules. If you use a Zoll device with a biphasic rectilinear waveform, first shock is at 120. If you are using a Philips smart biphasic device, 150 joules. If you're using a device like LifePak 15, it will be at 200 joules. Again, always follow the recommendation from the manufacturer. After delivering your first defibrillation, immediately start with high quality CPR. At this point, we can think about IV access, maybe use an interosseous route, we need to think about which is our first medication that we need to prepare. And our first medication we should start getting ready is epinephrine. Also monitor the quality of your CPR. Make sure that we are performing high quality CPR. At two minutes, stop CPR, switch roles, analyze the rhythm. If the rhythm is still VF, Deliver your second defibrillation. Again, follow the recommendation from the manufacturer and immediately resume high quality CPR. At this time, we can give the epinephrine that we've prepared earlier, which is one milligram, and we can repeat that dose every three to five minutes. We can also consider placing an advanced airway. If you use an advanced airway, don't forget waveform capnography. It helps you to confirm tube placement, but it can also help you to monitor the quality of your CPR. We also should start thinking about our next medication in the VF algorithm or pulses VTAC algorithm, which is amiodarone. Continue at the two minutes mark, stop CPR, switch roles, analyze. If it's still VF, we'll deliver defibrillation number three, Again, follow the recommendation from the manufacturer and immediately resume high quality CPR. At this time, we can give now a midrone. Our dose is 300 milligrams IV push, followed by a D5 water flush. You could also consider giving lidocaine at one 
to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. We should also think about our reversible causes. Why is our patients in this cardiac arrest? So think about your H's and your T's. Continue high quality CPR. Start thinking about our next medication, which would be epinephrine. Start preparing the medication and monitor your CPR throughout. After two minutes, stop, switch, analyze. If it's still VF, give defibrillation number four, follow that recommendation from the manufacturer, and res resume your high quality CPR. At this time, we can give our epinephrine that we've prepared earlier, one milligrams IV push, and again, we can repeat it every three to five minutes. Again, we can start thinking about our next medication that we should get ready, which is amiodarone, and continue CPR quality monitoring. After two minutes, stop, switch, analyze. If the rhythm is still VF, we'll deliver defibrillation number five. Again, make sure you follow that recommendation from the manufacturer and we can give the medication that we prepared earlier, and that's amiodarone. This time, your dose is lower at 150 milligrams. You can also use lidocaine at 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 milligrams per kilogram. So let's review. We only gave our first epinephrine after our second defibrillation. After the third defibrillation, we gave amiodarone. After the fourth defibrillation, we gave epinephrine. After the fifth defibrillation, again, we gave amiodarone. This means we gave one epinephrine every four minutes, and we gave one amiodarone every four minutes, which is in the middle point as per the recommendation of three to five minutes. As long as the rhythm did not change in between, your equal number of defibrillation, defibrillation two, four, six, eight, for instance, you can follow that by epinephrine. Unequal number of defibrillation, shock three, shock five, you can follow that with amiodarone again, as long as the rhythm did not change. If you benefited from this video, please consider subscribing, hit the like button and smash that notification bell. Your support is much appreciated. We hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next video.